Hello, Blake Rudis here with Everyday HDR and HDRinsider.com. And today I want to talk to you about how you can fake neutral density, that long dragging shutter speed that everyone just seems to love these days. So what if you don't have a neutral density filter? How do you fake it in Photoshop? Well, that's what I'm going to show you today. I'm going to show you you can take this original photograph and turn it into this faked long exposure photograph. You see, the thing about being a Photoshop artist is that we are the best pathological liars because we can cover our traces pretty well and make things look really realistic. Although I can't lie to save my life. Anyway, let's jump into Photoshop to see how we can take this photograph to this. In a recent webinar with Topaz Labs, I showed my long exposure workflow. Typically what that consists of is me taking a three shot bracketed series of the scene and then quickly putting on my Lee Big Stopper and then taking a long exposure for the scene. And then I blend them together. And basically what you get with that long exposure shot is a nice dragging shutter that makes all the clouds from that sunset kind of converge. And this is kind of what it looks like. You get these kind of swooping streaks that happen throughout the photo where it kind of takes these clouds and turns them into almost um, blown out streaks is kind of what it looks like. But sometimes you just don't have the opportunity to use your big stopper. And this was one of those nights I was doing some teaching, some training out on the scene, and I wasn't able to switch over to my big stopper and do it. But this shot is perfect for what would have been the big stopper because it was right after a storm and the clouds were moving super fast. So how do we go ahead and make this um, image that we have here look like this sweeping cloud effect here? Well, there's a way to cheat without using a big stopper, and that's what I'm going to show you. So what we need to do first is if you're uh, going to use a traditional masking method, I would recommend duplicating the layer by pressing Command or Control J. However, I'm going to use Topaz Remask. So I'm going to go to Filter, Topaz Labs, and Remask. And you don't have to use Remask, but Remask is really powerful because really what Blue does here is you tell Remask, hey, this stuff is the tricky stuff that I don't feel like masking. You do it for me. And then you paint in with green for what you want to stay and red for what you want to go away. It's a very intuitive way to mask. I really do enjoy this masking method. So I'll go ahead and just trace this around real quick. It doesn't have to be very perfect because Remask will know pretty much by what I've selected what I want to go away. So typically I want the sky to go away now. I don't want the sky to be there because that is the part that I'm going to make look like a long exposure shot. So I'm going to go ahead and take the fill bucket, fill it with red, press compute mask and bam. I have a mask. This mask is almost perfect. I just have to tell this that, hey, these areas I wanted you to keep by just touching them just a little bit with some green, just a single click to make that stuff come back. And I think this mask is almost perfect. Almost. Perfect. All right. So just a little hit right here and then I'll press OK. And that's my mask. So it doesn't look any different because uh, it automatically duplicates your layer. Like I said before, if you're going to make your own traditional mask, you can do that all day long if you want to. But there is my perfect mask. So now I'm going to just go ahead and turn the eyeball off on this layer because what I need to do on this background copy is take all my clouds here and make them um, clone stamped all over the image. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my clone stamp tool, press the Alt key to grab a selection, and just start stamping these clouds that are already here kind of all over this photograph. And if you know it doesn't have to be perfect, but I would get a smaller brush so that you're not retracing your steps. Really all I'm trying to do here is just get these nice clouds all over the photograph and it might look like what are you doing but you'll see why in a second because we're going to make our own kind of dragged out long exposure scene with this technique it's very powerful and it's very cool okay so there we go we got clouds all over the place right now what i need to do is blur these somehow so how am I going to do that? Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you on a smart filter. So I'm going to right click here and I'm going to go to uh, change this to a smart object. So basically when you change something to a smart object, any filtering that you do on that photograph, you can then go back into it any time and modify it accordingly. So if you do a radio blur filter, if you do a Gaussian blur filter, you're not stuck with what it was that you did at that exact time. You can go back into that blur and make it better. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to filter, go to blur, and go to radio blur. And radio blur is probably one of the oldest blurs in the book. It's been around since before the CS days. And there's no preview here, so you can't see what you're doing. And this is why we make this a smart object. 
So what we want to do is let's just hike this all the way up to 100, and then let's go and make this a zoom blur so that you see, see this is basically telling you that this is going to push these clouds out from the center point that you select, either out and down or out and up. So if you do spin blur, it's going to make it look like almost like star trails or something, which we don't need that. So we're just going to go back to that regular zoom. And the quality, we want that to be on its best. So we'll press OK. So now it's going to go ahead and run its deal. This is a very slow blur, all right? Sometimes it takes a long time for that filter to run, so bear with it. And now let's look at our original, this blurring of the clouds that we get from a 10-stop neutral density filter with that dragging long exposure. So this doesn't quite look like that, all right? This is way too blown out. This, this right here, maybe if I took a long exposure, would look like uh, this that you see here. So let's double-click that radio blur again. Let's just drag that down to maybe 50. See what that does. Because we don't want like a crazy outlandish blur. We do want to have some of those trails from those clouds. Just like you see here, there's some trailing from those clouds. So that still looks like it might be a little too much. Double click that radial blur. And then we'll drag that down to about, let's say 20. Press OK. So now we drag that down to 20. It doesn't look like it's maybe blurred enough. So we'll just do it a little bit more. And that's the beauty of it being on a smart object is that you always have access to it. So now we actually have our, uh, very similar to our dragging shutter here. It looks pretty good, but we can take this a little bit further. You know, what you can do here is that now that this is on its own layer here is that you can go ahead and add maybe a curves adjustment layer, press the alter option key so that it uh, goes right onto this layer only. And then maybe you can darken that up a little bit. So you can kind of dictate how you want this blurring of these clouds to look just by adding a curves adjustment layer there and you get to kind of play with it a little bit. Now, if for some reason you don't like how crazy blur this is, because sometimes I don't really appreciate that either, we can make a duplicate copy of this by pressing Command or Control J and just move it underneath there so that we have the actual clouds that were there. And then we can delete this mask, all right? So now, if we look at this, we're back to our original, all right? So with this, we can actually drop the opacity on this to kind of make some of those other clouds kind of come through a little bit to make it a little bit more realistic. Or we can maybe change this to soft light or overlay or some other blending option that allows us to uh, see this a little bit better. I think that if we drop this to something like 80% there, that's actually pretty good. And you'll see that a lot of saturation comes along with this. So if we go ahead and make an, a hue saturation adjustment layer, we can then press Alt or Option down here and then we can increase or decrease the saturation. And we can do that in any color that we want. So I'm going to take the targeted adjustment tool and click on the color blue here. And maybe I want to drop that saturation a little bit. Maybe even lighten it. Maybe even darken it. We'll see. Uh, maybe a little lighter. Maybe even change the hue of it to make it a little bit of a deeper blue. So you can see here that we did a pretty darn good job of faking a 10-stop neutral density filter, even though we didn't have one. It's pretty cool. Another thing we can do here is that we can actually add a mask to this. We can add a mask to this layer right here because now we have this underlying layer showing through with our original clouds, just like you have that opacity layer there that's showing us that. We can now make a mask on there. And we can use our brush tool and paint in black and just get a really big brush that's got a nice feathered edge to it. So the hardness is down to zero, a really big brush, and just go right here to the top and just bam, just click right there. Oh not the clone stamp tool, the brush tool. Okay. And then just bam, right there. And then we kind of see some of that stuff right behind the actual building. If we, if we turn our mask off and on by pressing shift and clicking on it, you can see that it just lets some of those clouds kind of come through from the background, look a little bit more uh, realistic, like we see in our 10 stop neutral, neutral density filter image that we have here. So we still get that uh, kind of cloud effect around that bottom area there where those clouds are really kind of converging into where there's not a whole lot of movement. It makes that same scene there. So it seems like a very uh, convoluted process, but it's very simple. I'm going to break it down real quick. So the first thing we did was we made a mask to keep our original layer there, uh, our original foreground layer there, like you see in this one right here. We then allowed that copy that we had in the background to really kind of uh, exaggerate the uh, 
the clouds there by putting those clouds all over the place. The reason why you throw those clouds all over the place is because if you don't, when you blur this, you'll actually get some residual blur from this building getting blurred in. So then you don't get like a nice bluish kind of blur. You actually get like these little streaks of yellow that would be in there too. And it looks unnatural. So if you want to do this, you got to make sure you clone stamp those clouds out quite a bit and all over the place. So after that, because a lot of saturation kind of came along with that, we then added a curves adjustment layer to uh, fine tune our streaks and then also desaturated a little bit. So it's not so much. The last thing we did, which is a complete option, was we put the original background behind this so that we could let some of those clouds kind of seep through from the original layer uh, so that that blur layer kind of has a reference point with those clouds behind it to kind of blur and converge into. So again, I've done a lot of 10 stop neutral density stuff in the past. Uh, you know, one of the things I do when I go out on a sunset shoot, when I do my HDR shoots, is I always, always get myself a nice long exposure image while I'm there, if the scene uh, will allow for it. So I've done quite a bit of this long exposure stuff, and this is very, very accurate to what faking long exposure is. So if you like this tutorial, please share it. I know that there's somebody out there who doesn't have a neutral density filter that would love to see their images look like one, and this is how you do it. My name is Blake from EverydayHDR.com and HDRInsider.com. Like it, share it, pass it along. I'm sure somebody else wants to see this. Thank you for watching.